Yeah. We step into deeper waters by faith. We trust, Father, that we will get to that point where we will not just swim, but the water will carry us away. Thank you, Father. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated this morning. It's calling me deeper. This morning I want us to consider as we have maybe a look again at our nation and then we will read from the book of Job. Yesterday evening, I think it was about 4.35, I was driving towards the stadium and I really didn't know what was going on there. I'd been told by a couple of people that they were attending an immigration interview. But it didn't register in my mind. I just went by the stadium because I needed to do a turn. And for one second, I thought a football match was taking place. Until I began to see hordes of people all dressed in white, looking like coppers in camp, trooping out of that place. It was such a scary sight. Later on at night, we would, I'm sure every one of you is aware that lots of people died in that exercise. Because there was a stampede that took place in certain places like Abuja and Port Harcourt and Lagos and Kaduna, Nonicha and Asaba and Benin and wherever else. But in a bid to look for jobs that are really not existing because over one million people went for the, that exercise and only 5,000 jobs were available or less. It means, and if you know the way things work in this country, most of the people have even been taken. Just an exercise to raise money because if a million people pay a thousand naira each, that's a billion naira. The worst kind of death is when you die for nothing. When Jesus died, he died for something. You die for a job you are not even going to get. And those who conducted that exercise knew exactly what they were doing. It troubles me if it doesn't trouble you. Because those who died, any of them could have been related to any of you. And for us to think that all is well, to confess that all is well will make things well, is not so in our nation. We've traveled a hundred years, the journey of a hundred years, and it seems like we've not even started at all. I want to read Job 18 because this is my immediate response 
to what has happened and if you feel like saying amen say amen if you don't feel like saying amen just say oh me that does not include those who are killed daily in plateau state where pastor Ibangas are from Kaduna, Katsina. Benue had its own recently. Nassau has had its own. And other parts of our nation has had theirs. The truth is, we need a new breed of leaders to emerge. Because the current crop that our democracy constantly spews out cannot lead a nation aright at all levels it's not just at the presidency but it's at every state level the Benway state governor was attacked by militants or whatever they call themselves herdsmen and they exchange fire Governor's entourage was exchanging fire for over an hour, so even the governors themselves are not safe. Recently, I was watching on TV, the FCT minister saying that his directors had lied to him, that he didn't know that Abuja was this dirty, and that we miscreants were on the streets. And beggars and all kinds of people. And I'm wondering, do we dwell in the same city? How do you even make that kind of statement? He has given marching orders. You know, I think it is Karl Marx who said that it is where a person is eating from that determines his perspective and what he sees. Uh, you don't know what that means. And when you're eating what you should not be eating and all you're there for is to amass wealth and loot, you will drive through the city and you, there are things you should see that you won't see while people see fields, you'll be seeing land that you can take from people. It's interesting how once you begin to touch the things that are not yours to touch, and once you begin to violate universal and biblical principles of leadership, your perspective changes. And those who didn't have clothes when going to school will no longer see those who are clothesless. It is amazing how it works. Because when what you are eating begins to eat you, you won't see well. There will be no peace for the wicked. Amen. Whether they're in north, south, whether they're in places of leadership or followership, that scripture is not a curse. But it's scripture. Let's look at Job chapter 18. I read from verse 5. And hear the words of Bildad the Shuhite, who said, Yea, the light of the wicked shall be put out, and the spark of his fire shall not shine. The light shall be dark in the tabernacle, and his candle shall be put out with him. The steps of his strength shall be straightened and his own counsel shall cast him down. 
For he is cast into a net by his own feet. And he walks upon a snare. The jinn shall take him by the heel. And the robber shall prevail against him. Not against us. The snare is laid for him in the ground and a trap for him in the way. Terror shall make him afraid on every side and will drive him to his feet. His strength shall be hunger beaten and destruction shall be ready at his side. It shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle. And it shall bring him to the king of terrors. It shall dwell in his tabernacle because it is none of his. Bring stones shall be scattered upon his habitation. His roots shall be dried up beneath. And above shall his branch be cut off. His remembrance will perish from the earth. And he shall have no name in the street. shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world he shall neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remaining in his dwellings they that come after him shall be astonished at his day as they went before were affrighted surely such are the dwellings of the wicked and this is the place of him that does not acknowledge God. Can I hear an amen? amen? And to all the wicked in this nation, we declare amen. amen. It will come to pass upon their lives. We decree it as the church of Jesus Christ upon the face of the earth. Can I hear an amen? amen. One of the first things that Nehemiah did when the burden of the Lord came upon him these are simple principles of leadership that are in scripture was that he went all around the city of Jerusalem to do a personal inspection of assessment because there are things you cannot thrust on subordinates. You must see for yourself. If our leaders travel by road, our roads will be better. You went around all those schools by road. And you went to see every school under you. It's not what people will tell you. They tell you all kinds of things. It's called the power of vested interests. And they are everywhere, including church. They're even finding more in church now. Amen. And amen. And amen. that our president would have enough wisdom to address the nation today and to call for the heads of those <laughs> who are responsible for cramming look let me tell you something for share there are two doors here written what on top exit. What do you think they're there for? Do you think that there can be a fire in this auditorium? Now somebody will say, God forbid, and I agree with you. But you know, that's how we live. Where we will make provision in case of emergencies. And that's why the doors are there. 
so that in case there's some emergency, you run out to there. And there's a long corridor. The wall behind is concrete, so you can keep the fire away from the corridor. And there's a corridor linking the entire premises, both at the two ends. And I know some of you didn't know, but I'm telling you, just in case. And the stadium is built with, with 40,000, is a 40,000 seater capacity, 60,000. It means that those who designed it made provision for 60,000 people alone and also made emergency provision for 60,000 people. If you have 70,000, you have a disaster if something goes wrong. Some of the things that you know, many of these people do not know. That's why if you sense the call of God upon your life, step out. That's your terrain, that's a mountain that we must take. No matter what level it is, whether it's a local government level, let's get there and make a difference and bring about change. Amen. Say to your neighbor, it's well with your soul. If you are not the wicked. But that scripture, it shall not be well with the wicked. The Lord help us. Hallelujah. Oh, it's good to bring these things to the fore because we cannot live like we're not a part of this environment. Uh, when you step out of church after a couple of hours, where do you go? You go back to the same country, into the same environment that you're, you've been a part of. I think Sheraton can take away certain realities from us. Nicely covered seats. Carpeted floors. Air conditioning, cooling your sweat as you worship God. And everybody looking so nice and dainty. And then you live here and you step out there. That's called reality. I also pray that every one of you will arise to become entrepreneurs. And take some of those young men and women out of the streets. So that they would not be trampled on the ground by wicked men. If all you can do is employ one, two, three, four, that's a good beginning. Don't have to think of a hundred yet. Start with one, start with two, start with three. And let's not be deceived by figures that are thrown at us every day. We have two million jobs provided for Nigerians. <laughs> it's only lying. I pray that the national dialogue would help to address some of these issues in Nigeria. Because that may be the only hope we have left. The 
the structure of this nation is faulty. In Benue State, Fulanese, what do they call them, migrants, are fighting indigenous. In Plateau State, you have the same phenomenon. Kaduna State, you have the same. Boko Haram, Zimbonu, Yobe, Adamawa. Now they hit Katsina. When you go south, south, you have militants and who? Kidnappers. Southeast, kidnappers. Southwest, <laughs> arm robbers, OPC, area boys, tormenting kidnappers too, tormenting the lives of people. All of this reflects a jungle. Lawlessness abides. Something must change. And we trust God that he will. I once knew in Nigeria that was different. For some of the younger generation, they've never seen anything better than what they have now. Many of us saw a great country, at least a country that seemed to work. Where your fences did not need to be high because nobody would dare break into your house. Where you could drive out at any time of the night and you were not being scared of being kidnapped. Now, when I have to take walks at night, I carry a taser with me. And when I hear footsteps on my back, I look. If you come too close, <laughs> hundred thousand volts. It is called dunamis. dynamic ability to cause changes in your life permanently. Some of you think this is all a joke. When we were attacked by armed robbers in Kaduna, twice, nobody told me I needed to get a gun. Nobody did. I have a license for it. So don't think it's illegal. Signed by the Commissioner of Police. At that time during the crisis in Kaduna, we, we had to protect the church. That's when we learned to make petrol bombs. It's true. Because some madmen cannot come and destroy what people have labored to build. If the nation won't defend us, we'll defend ourselves. Defense is in scripture. It's, it's, it's in scripture. Oh, you've never seen it there? Children of Israel will go to war. 